Hey everyone, this is George Cross, and welcome back to another episode of Mindset Monday. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a good week. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you had a good weekend. I, I hope you're having whatever, whatever you're having, I hope it's good. <laughs> it's basically what I'm saying. Uh, so thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of this podcast. I hope that I can help set up your week, um, get you to think about some things, maybe a little bit differently, challenge you, get you to think about um, some stuff that maybe kind of, you know, throws you off a little bit. And this is actually one of the quotes that I've heard a lot of times, and I'm not a big fan, is don't sweat the small stuff. And I think sometimes the small stuff is the most meaningful stuff. And I think the small stuff added up can actually lead to some big results and kind of thinking about this. And one of the articles that really kind of stuck out to me and made me think about this was actually this article about David Lee Roth from Van Halen. It's one of my favorite stories. I absolutely love it. And um, as someone who speaks and, you know, sends contracts out for speaking and stuff like that, I always get this joke about like, hey, like, do you have like no red and M&Ms? And it's kind of just like a, a joke thing that I've heard. And you might have heard that reference in, you know, kind of like this diva idea. And I actually didn't know where it came from. And so I read this article and it's actually linked in uh, the description down below uh, from, uh, I think it's entrepreneur.com. And it was from years ago. And it was actually the whole m M&M m thing started from uh, David Lee Roth years ago. And basically what it was is Van Halen put, a clause in their contract, they have this massive, massive contract. And in it, it basically said in their room, they had to have a bowl of M&Ms, but there were to be no brown M&Ms, right? So it seems like a totally like diva thing. Like why, why can't you eat brown M&Ms? But the, the, the reasoning behind the contract or behind that, that stipulation of the contract was they actually had a very complicated lighting system. And through that process, um, they wanted to make sure that people did things right. Because if you didn't do things right, it could actually cause um, damage to the stadium, to the arena. And it's a really interesting article. And I'll, I'll share it in the, in the link below so you can read the whole thing. But basically what they would do is they go into their room and immediately they would go check the bowl of M&M's. Or if there was a bowl of M&M's. And if there wasn't a bowl of M&M's or the brown ones weren't removed what they knew was people didn't read the contract. So then they knew they'd have to deal with all this stuff. So it's something that's really interesting. And a lot of times, you know, I, I deal with this where I, I get frustrated when people don't read, you know, and I try to be as you know quick and point as possible. They don't read little details and emails. They miss points, but I'm going to read this part um, from the article, which I thought was really, really interesting uh, about the contract. And so from entrepreneur.com, it says, Buried amongst dozens of points in Valen Halen's rider was an odd stipulation that were to be no brown M&M candies in the backstage area. If any brown M&Ms were found backstage, the band could cancel the entire concert at the full expense of the promoter. That meant because of a single uh, candy, a promoter could lose millions. For decades, this stood as a humiliating act of self-indulgence, a rock band forcing someone to search through candy, removing every last brown one for no apparent reason. Yet when, Led, when Lee Singer David Lee Roth finally develops a real reason for the bizarre clause, an entirely different picture was painted, one that serves as a valuable lesson for business. In now departed arenas such as Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens, the original Boston Garden, and Chicago Stadium, Van Halen was loading in massive amounts of staging, sound equipment, and lighting. Unfortunately, these buildings were never built to accommodate a rock band of Van Halen's scope. Without specific guidelines, old floors could buckle, old floors could buckle and collapse, beams could rupture, and the lives of the band, their crews, and the fans could be at serious risk. To ensure the promoter read every single word in the contract, the band created the No Brown M&Ms clause. It was a canary in a coal amount to indicate that the promoter may not have paid attention to more other more important parts of the rider, and that there could be other bigger problems at hand. Whenever the band found brown M&Ms candies backstage, they immediately did a complete line check, inspecting every aspect of the sound, lighting and stage setup to make sure it was perfect. David Lee Roth would also trash the band's dressing room to prove a point. It is the rock star diva uh, thing, uh, reinforcing his reputation in the process. Van Halen created a seem- seemingly silly cause to make sure that every little detail was taken care of. It was important both for the experience of the fans and the safety of the band to make sure that no little problems created bigger issues. I, I just, that was such an interesting story. I had no clue 
uh, where that actually came from and, and why, why that happened. So uh, if you ever hear the, the M&M story, uh, you have a, an interesting cocktail party. Uh, if we do that, <laughs> if that's a thing anymore, a uh, story that you can share with other people. So I, I thought about this and kind of like I, I struggled with it, to be honest with you, when I first heard it, because, you know, I, you know it's kind of like the whole uh, pay attention to the details, don't sweat the small stuff. Like, what is it, right? And I guess it depends on how you look at things. And what might seem insignificant to you might actually be very significant to others. So here's something I was thinking about from a professional level. One of the things that I do when I interact, you know, when I'm teaching classes, when I'm uh, connecting with people is I really focus on getting names right and remembering names. And again, I wish I was perfect in all the stuff that I talk about, but it's something that I focus on because I know that it matters when people say not only your name and address you by your name, but actually say it in the proper way. And I remember actually talking to um, a, a fellow speaker and they shared some advice with me that was really helpful. And I actually think this originated from uh, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And basically the, the advice was the, the most powerful world, word in the, in, the, in the human language is hearing your own name, right? And one of the things that I've done and I, I try to do to really kind of personalize when I do keynotes, when I have conversations is basically um, have these little stories about people in the audience, people that I connected with before and saying their names. And not only does it actually make the person, I think, feel really kind of, you know, um, honored that I'm, I'm, I'm bringing them into the experience of my story and connecting that and not just, you know, doing it in meaningful ways. But I think it also says something to the rest of the group that's listening that what I'm doing right now is I am here, right? I'm here in this space. And it's not me just doing my thing. It's me honoring where I am at this moment and why it's so important. It's kind of like when you think of the, the you know, the rock band, you know, addressing like, hello, Cleveland, right? I don't know why I always say Cleveland, but when you get the city wrong, it kind of offends people, right? And so I think... That's something to me to making me think about that. But it's not just saying their names, but like remembering details and conversations that we had and being able to address that. And a lot of times people will come up to me and will say things like, Hey, I remember this. And I said, and I can, I, I, I do my best to remember these little moments and to kind of interact and have those connections. And I think that those little details make a huge difference. And for me, a lot of times, um, those actually lead to more opportunities. Those lead to connections because, you know, I think one of the things I've always struggled with is when someone talks about relationships in keynotes, but actually they won't let you have direct access to them. You got to go through 84 people to have a conversation with that person or it's like, don't look me in the eye and their rider kind of thing. Uh, and it's like, do you really mean that, right? And I think to me, um, I always try to live by what I say, right? And vice versa. I'm not the best at it. I try, or I, I'm like, I'm not perfect. I, I try my best, but I think, you know, those little details matter to other people and they matter to me. Right. And I, you know, it's nice uh, to be acknowledged that way. So I think about how we might see that as something that's kind of insignificant, but it makes a huge difference to other people. Right. And so those little details actually really matter. And so on a personal level, I think about my uh, fitness and my exercise and in the little details of like, hey, I'm, you know, going to have a little extra snack here and not really think about it and this little extra snack here and this little thing here too. Those little additions of calories that are maybe not accounted for. I'm not saying don't enjoy food or don't do this, but those things tend to add up and they tend to add calories to this too. And so when you have your regular meals, you have that process of, you know, kind of watching what you eat, but you just kind of add a little bit here, a little bit here, but you don't really think about it. That stuff adds up. And it can, I think for me, it led to some disasters where my health was really, really bad because maybe my, you know, this meal was healthy, but I kind of had some extra stuff that I didn't really think about. And then I have some extra stuff here, have some extra stuff here. And I can always think about that, but those little things start to add up. And it's the same thing with exercise. One of the things that I really learned uh, to develop muscle, you really kind of have to focus on the movement of the exercise it is actually better to go slow and do things properly than to kind of speed through or just do the heaviest weight as possible. 
And so when you kind of focus on those little details through exercise, through that process, that's when you actually start to see significant gains. Not when you just kind of burn through it and be excited about the, the workout, but it's the small details inside that workout that actually lead to the lasting change, that lead to the, the significant shifts in what you're actually doing. So I think kind of summing this all up, paying attention to those little details to sometimes when we sweat the small stuff, the small stuff leads to big things later on. It leads to it. It might not seem significant in the moment, but I think we're not actually doing stuff for the moment. We're doing stuff for the long term. And so when we actually pay attention to those details, right now it might seem small, later it becomes big. And I think that's the ultimate goal. And so I, I, I again, I struggle with this too, right? Because I know sometimes... Uh, I can I can get overworked on stuff that doesn't really matter. And so it's kind of finding that balance of two and really think about what matters when and really how we utilize our time and how we connect with others. So just something I was thinking about, hopefully it can help you. At least you got a good story about Van Halen, which is one of my favorite stories. I just wanted to find a way to share that because I think it's so interesting. But I hope you enjoyed that episode of Mindset Monday. Have a wonderful week. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for all you do. Take care.